First, your calls on whether a Tory peer should apologise for suggesting Carol Vorderman can't comment on politics due to her bikini pictures. 0207 862 is the number. Sean Bailey made the comments during an appearance on GB News last week, which has since gone viral, with the hashtag sexist Sean trending. At number one on, on Twitter, apparently. Uh, this is what he said about Carol. And look, on one hand, she's got all that stuff, of, you know, she's a serious political commentator. And then if you look at her Instagram, it's all pictures of her bums and her boobs. So what, what, is, it? what is it here? She can't be both. But that the phrase, her bums. Her bums and her, her I didn't know she Never had plural. plural bums. <laughs> with any, never do that. That, that. You'll fall out with somebody if you use that word. Countdown star Carol called his remarks misogynistic and referenced a friend of the show, Ava Santina, and because you know Ava, who was also the victim of offensive comments made by Lawrence Fox on Dan Wooten's GB News show, which led to their suspension. So Lord Bailey was handed a peerage last summer in Boris Johnson's resignation list, despite a row over his tenders at this lockdown party so it's in the middle of lockdown all dancing having fun and that was thrown by his london mayoral campaign in december 2020 he apologized for that should he apologize for these comments angela um i think there is a, a sensible sentiment in the core of what he said he should be apologized for the way that he phrased it but not for what he was trying to say so i don't like the bum and boobs i think it's it's very disrespectful it's very dismissive it reduces women to kind of cartoon shapes but i would say quite simply that if carol vorderman who is a, a highly intelligent accomplished experienced presenter she's she knows and understands lots of different things over her years of broadcasting and stuff but um, how do you take your, get yourself taken seriously if you do that other stuff as well? She's entitled to it. She's free to do it. I applaud the freedom to do it. That's what we what we live to live in a liberated society. But he's making a simple when, point. Yeah, when you say do that other stuff, I, I know we've got some pictures of Carol Vorderman online. We should we should get some on for you. But I, I, yeah, so there we go. It, we're not talking. I wouldn't use the word raunchy. I think this is just her. I guess body positive, probably, Andy. What do you say? Yes, it's, 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 no, it's, it's hardly pornography. You, you, you're sighing, Angela. You yeah, think it is wrong. It's a beautiful it's, woman looking beautiful. I mean, what's wrong with it? It's 100%. And she's entitled to and she's free to. And I would fight to the death her right to do that. I am saying, when you post stuff like that, I mean, I don't post stuff like that because it would frighten the horses. But... Let's do that one again. I don't think that's <laughs> fighting the horses. No, Angela. Right, OK. And Sorry, this is, missed this that. is missed live you. telly, so we can't rewind <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. No, but it would the... not frighten any horses, ponies or, or yeah, anything else. No animals were hurt in the <laughs> making of this Instagram post. But the, the, the point is that you are saying, look at me, look at my figure, Look at look at how yes, I have made myself, know, which a, she's entitled to do. What what but, I am but saying, but it's not compatible I'm, with politics. I'm That's a serious all the okay. author. I'm a serious author, and yet I posted a picture with my husband. We'd run into the sea on Boxing Day, and I'm there in my shorts with with my chest out. You know, you know, virtually naked with just some shorts not on. The same. And and I still expect to be taken seriously because I'm a man, and that's the. Have difference. you got that picture, by the way? No, I haven't given it to your producer, Sandy. <laughs> I would love we it to be on that. television. But, so, but, but so, I still can expect to be taken seriously by people because I'm a man. And for a woman, I think that is a double standard. I didn't, I mean, I, until today, I hadn't really looked closely at Carol Vorderman's pictures and, and um, online. And all I would say is I don't, I don't think they're overtly sexual. I just, they just seem kind of Come happy. Come on, there's full-on cleavage with everyone. And I, and I repeat, before everybody has a go at me, you know, tin hat on, she is entitled to do that. But if but not you with want politics. Your, you know, Nigel Farage went into the jungle, OK? So the argument is, oh, he's reaching a greater audience people had never heard with of. With his bum. But on the other hand, he becomes a bit of a cartoon figure in politics as well. Mm. So you have to ask yourself, either I want to be taken seriously or not. If she doesn't, who cares? But, but there is nobody... a chance that she takes that chance if she, if she posts stuff like that. I hear you, but nobody said, now that Farage has got his bum out, he can't stand for Parliament. Nobody said that. But they say it with Carol. Exactly. At which, um, point, at which point does someone showing their décolletage mean, therefore, a woman is not actually allowed to be taken seriously or won't be taken seriously? That seems to be a societal decision that's been made without anyone but, agreeing yeah, to. Well, there's, there's Ava got involved. So Ava is, our, as I say, friend of the show. She's on a lot. We, we love her dearly. Ava Santina Evans. She was the one just on the background who got really attacked by Lawrence Fox in a horrible way. And she then came back on the Carol Vorderman story. Really exhausting to see this said about her. It's so easy to use your interview time to go to someone's arguments, but he can't help himself and go for her body. Former Tory mayoral candidate photographed partying during lockdown. So that keeps coming up back at Sean Bailey. 
I don't know. It's, it's, let's give us a call on this. We'd love to know what you think about this. Whether Sean Bailey is out of order and should apologise, or whether he make he make it a fair point. Sammy on Twitter says, "Does anybody critique a man's choice of outfit while talking about politics?" But yeah, they do. Politics impact every aspect of our lives. Surely we want to promote healthy discussion in every setting to reach, reach a wider audience. When I said they do, it's because I remember that some of those Tory MPs got a bit excited when they were doing their vaccines, right? So they would get chest, they would do the, have a look at me on my vaccine, and I've got no clothes above the waist. So they would go in bare chested, and people said, this is either politics or that. Lisa on Twitter says, no, he shouldn't apologize. Carol Vorderman knows exactly what she's doing. So whatever your thoughts, do pick up the phone, give us a call on this. And uh, yeah, I don't know, you, you obviously feel strongly about it, Andy. Well, I, I just think we live in a world where there's a lot of body shaming. And actually, if um, uh, 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 Carol Vorderman is, you know, uh, proud of her body and is uh, posting lovely pictures, what's the problem with that? And, and I, don't, I don't understand why showing your body means you're not allowed to have a political opinion. Guess what, Sean Bailey and everyone who's listening, if you, if you have a body and you post pictures on Instagram, you still get to vote, mm. you still pay taxes, you're still part of this country and you can give your opinions freely. But if, if Mrs Thatcher was doing that, let's say... Yeah, look, it's not a question. She's not a politician, yeah. though. Andy, Andy, you're using the word not allowed as if somehow she's going to be prohibited or muzzled for doing this. Nobody is suggesting that. The, the, the implication is that if you want to be part of the, the so-called... Um, the kind of respected political opinion, then you're not distracted by other things. It makes more sense not to. There's a reason why there's a dress code when I, I don't go into the shops wearing just my, my kind of underwear or, or whatever. There's, we have a dress code for certain things. And, and therefore. She's a television personality. She's, she's not a politician. I could understand if she was strategic. in number she's 10. She's got very political, Carol. I yes. mean, she, she is now. I mean, she's almost. A part of the political landscape now. And I, she's got a, a thing about the Conservatives, right or wrong, and she's just hit, hitting them with her bazookas every time. That's the wrong phrase. Talking of bazookas. She's, she's aiming a bazooka at them every time they move. You know, when I was and, on... And you might say, good for... Actually, let's just take it all. Sorry. Antonio, sorry. Hi. Hi. What do you think about whether Carol, if she's in politics, needs to dress in a more demure way. I suppose that's what we're asking. No, I, I don't think she does need to. I think she's perfectly entitled to dress any way she wants to. And really, it's about changing perceptions. Like, um, I can't remember your guest's name, the, the male guest. The male guest is Andy Wilson. I see what's Yeah, yeah. Yes. Male aren't, males aren't judged by the way they dress or what kind of photographs they take. Mm. And it's really a matter of time. Women should be able to dress the way they want to and be taken seriously, and perceptions will change over time. I'm, but when we look at our politics, right, I'm mm. still amazed how many politicians wear ties. It, and it's starting to drive me crazy. In the real world, hardly anyone wears a tie anymore. I've got a friend who belongs to some fancy club in London. They've stopped. If the, the tie rule they abandoned two years ago, and they were the last to abandon it. You can go in without a tie. But, Antonia, maybe politicians just think they're different. Maybe that's it. Well, they may think that, which is they're perfectly entitled to think they're different. But at the same time, things are changing. They've got to move with the times. All right. Thank you. Well, well, in that case, I think by extension, Andy, you've got to let people wander into the House of Commons wearing a Bermuda shirt and shorts. You've maybe, got to. Maybe, um, that would be a, maybe that would be a good thing. We're going to have another look at the Sean Bailey clip in just a moment because we need to work out, is it right that he should say it and not apologise? He hasn't. Should we have another look? He's talking about Carol Vorderman. And look, on one hand, she's got all that stuff. Or, you know, she's a serious political commentator. And then if you look at her Instagram, it's all pictures of her bums and her boobs. So what, what, is, it? what is it here? She can't be both. But that she can't be both. A politician can't show themselves regularly in a bikini in a way that might be provocative, that is, pro that might be provocative. I was going to say that is. Oh, careful. Look, if no, that was... Uh, and at the same time be involved in politics. And you, you believe you want some decorum. I want some You're decorum. You're old fashioned, okay. aren't you? No, I'm not. I, I just believe in standards. I refuse to raise them. No, but uh, uh, the, <laughs> the thing is that, okay, you're flying on a plane. You've got a, a highly skilled airline pilot who he or she is going to fly you to New York. And they say, come on, everybody on board. And he's in, he's in a Hawaiian shirt and shorts with a daft crocodile Dundee hat on his head. Would you feel confident about him flying that plane? No, the analogy surely is that the day before the flight, you see him in the hotel and he's mucking around in the pool with the pool noodle. 
and you say, I don't want that guy flying my plane <laughs> because he's the sort of guy who likes to have fun in a swimming pool. Well, you see, I... And I think to myself, what's... Come on. No, yeah, because was, he's on his was, Come on. When I, was on. when I was on Big Brother in 2016, there were lots of young women uh, and men, indeed, in the house who liked getting their... Uh, boobs if they're women and bums out on social media and it would have been very nice if some of those people had taken an interest in politics in the way that obviously yeah. Carol Vorderman does you know so I think actually we need to encourage people who who are interested in social media and stuff and posting pictures like that should actually be engaged it's, oh. it's oh. not tell them it's, snobbily it's, you're not allowed to no I mean there is no there shouldn't be a dress code for politics but I, I you know should he apologize Linda in Kent should he apologize no Definitely not. Right. I'm fed up with people being asked to apologise for, for what they genuinely think. I mean, what's the good of him apologising? He could apologise right this minute and he won't mean it. And he's entitled to his opinion. Angela has said several times this morning that Carol Vorderman is entitled to wear whatever she likes. Good. I don't care if she walks and puts her face on Instagram or all her bits. But don't expect people not to comment. She's setting herself up. She's putting her head above the parapet. So, but are we not you know, then? Gonna... We're, are we not thinking, Linda, that we're sort of saying that to be in politics or around politics, you need to wear the uniform, and the no, uniform is usually a suit and tie, and that makes it a bit exclusive. No, I don't say that's, that's Sean Bailey in the house. To wear a uni right? uniform, but. <laughs> She sets herself up as being a serious political commentator. And then you've got pictures of her. I mean, you mentioned Farage in the jungle. Yeah. Um, getting his bottom out. Um, that's putting it politely. Um, but he didn't take the pictures of his bottom. No, that's she true. Is. He was in the shower. Thanks, Linda. Richard and Milton Keynes, what do you think? Should Sean Bailey apologise? No, he's, listen, his basic freedom of speech is what's under attack here. I mean, we get loads of idiots who think they can force people to believe, think and act in the way that they want them to. But in actual fact, he's different. Carol Vorderman's different and everybody's different. And we should celebrate that basically he's given his basic opinion. And actually, he's absolutely bang on. In, in, you know, when you look at... Car I admire Carol Vorderman uh, um, for what she did on Countdown, but... When I see her on a telly, I admire her because she's a sexy-looking lady. And actually, there's nothing wrong with admiring women or criticising women. And because everyone's different, you should allow the freedom of speech. He's not done anything Got it. under Andy. Let, let me put that to Andy, because Andy would disagree. But Richard, that, then you must agree that it's Carol Vorderman's freedom of speech to call him a misogynist. Just like it's your freedom of speech to, to say what you've just so said. You're saying, it's, you're, saying, you're saying, Richard, by the way, hello, Milton Keynes, that's where I'm from. You're saying, Richard, it's, it's OK for, to use freedom of speech to say that she shouldn't uh, have her boobs and bums out, but it's not OK to have freedom of speech to say, don't be a misogynist. No, I didn't say that. I said they're both entitled to freedom but of Richard, speech. But, Richard, we've got speech. limits on freedom of speech, and we saw the limits when that, you know, that clown Lawrence Fox then pipes up uh, I'll it's repeat what he it, said here. He, he says, I wouldn't not, shag that about Ava Santina yeah, Evans. I mean, no, it's a disgusting thing to say. We're not, we're, listen, that's a different to topic altogether. Different. The Carol Vorderman topic, very clear. Nobody should be offended by what this bloke said. And if you are right. offended, you need to climb off your horse and get down off it because quite clearly you should be celebrating everyone's different and he's entitled to his opinion. Yeah, and I shall tell you what, what stands in, in Richard's favour with this argument, Richard, is that it was about a week ago that Sean Bailey said this and no one noticed. And then suddenly it starts, someone's found a tape of it in their loft or something mm. and they've put it on Twitter. Doesn't it? Absolutely, and that's the power of social media. But doesn't it play to credibility? Because part of, you know, being fair-minded, one could say, well, I'm not really interested in Sean Bailey's views on politics because here's a guy who he was discredited himself. I mean, I know he apologised, blah, blah. So who's he to lecture us or offer his opinions? That That's all part of the conversation. The fact is that... that um, Carol Vorderman, I was going to say Carol Malone, sorry, Carol, if you're watching. <laughs> Carol Vorderman commoditizes herself. She accepts that in putting endless pictures of herself with her breasts spilling out of these skimpy bikinis, which she looks spectacular in, that when she meets somebody and she wants to talk about the Tory party, they're thinking, 
oh, that's Carol, isn't it? You know, and they may not actually be listening to her. I don't, Hopefully, this is so, that's a sad reflection about those people. It may well be. It may well be. But the point is that if you but, want to be taken seriously, why not? Erad there are different ways to change a mindset, not by thrusting your breasts in people's faces. OK, Clive in Merseyside, do you, do you agree with Angela? Absolutely agree. And the point I made to your colleague when I first rang up <clears throat> that was if that had been a male commentator or a male equivalent of Carol Vaudman standing there in the posing pouch, we'd be having the same conversation. And 100% it's about standards. If you want to be taken seriously, well, you should consider what you're putting out there for the general public on whatever platform you're putting it out I'm there. trying to think of a male. I've mentioned that the, the, the Tory MPs who got vaccinated, I think they were all Tories, Johnny Mercer was one, yeah. and they stripped off. I'm trying to think of other MPs. I think Chris Bryant stripped off to his underpants once. Yeah. But other Tory, or uh, sorry, other MPs generally, who've, who've disported themselves in a way unbecoming. And I can't yeah. actually think of any. That, I mean... Yeah. I, I, I will say, I will agree with Clive on one thing, that I think that there is a, little, a level of misogyny here, uh, uh, sorry, hypocrisy here, where um, women who are very angry about this on Twitter are also the same people who will call men gammons and take the mickey out of them for being bald and having paunches and things. And it's like, well, you can't have it both ways. I do think there's an element of that. Misandry as well. Yeah, know, no, I, I agree. There's always been double standards, which was, which was best exemplified with the Diet Coke break advert, which I know is no there longer a, on there it. There was a... Um, a guy called Ben Everett, I'm told, Tory MP, who did a whole... I think it was called... He did it like that, but bare-chested. But what was it called... Uh, uh, there was some phrase that you use. Th a thirst trap, it was called. This gammon thing, there's now oboe. Have you heard this? No, what's that? What's oboe? Well, I want to know. a beast bald and older. Right. Well, So someone said these, these oboes... Yeah. And they're all aimed at men. Yeah, and it's always been... And, and I, I accept there are very much double standards when you can say, oh, the old geezer. And also, all the bra burners do not come out in defence of men who become commoditised. It's some, almost like fair game because we're making up for all the years of I think of, you uh, sort of ended prejudice. up agreeing a, a little bit on this, just on, on the way... I disagree way... with him. OK, you do disagree. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Clive. Thanks for all your calls.